What we do every day is so hard. People don't give any of us the credit that we deserve for dealing with the horrors that are brought before us. Courtrooms are often the setting for intense, emotionally wrought scenes, usually involving the accused, the victim, or the family members thereof. Rarely does it involve the judge presiding over the case. But that's exactly what happened in the five courtrooms we are taking you to today. Let's watch. Number 5. Larissa and Christopher Rodriguez Common Pleas Court Judge Nancy Margaret Russo broke down in tears for the first time in her career as she sentenced Larissa Rodriguez and her boyfriend Christopher for their roles in the passing and backyard burial of their five-year-old special needs child, Jordan. I know as a judge I'm not supposed to show emotion and in 22 years I never have, Russo said shortly after sentencing, but this is one of the worst things I've ever seen in my life. The other thing that this case I think really drives home is that there is insufficient consideration given to the people that work in the criminal justice system. And I look at these photographs and it's very hard. And I think you should be recognized more for the difficulty of what you do. And the same to the state and to the defense. This is equally difficult for you. I know as a judge I'm not supposed to show emotion. And in 22 years, I never have. This is one of the worst things I've ever seen in my life. Whatever this child's life was supposed to be, you made sure it didn't happen. The Cuyahoga County Medical Examiner's Office was unable to determine Jordan's exact cause of passing, but officially ruled his passing as a homicide. Jordan's corpse revealed he had previously fractured his wrist and several ribs, a likely sign of child harm. Larissa and Christopher Rodriguez both pled guilty to charges of involuntary manslaughter, felonious attack, child endangering and gross misconduct of a corpse as part of a deal to prevent a homicide trial and thereby avoiding a potential life sentence. The couple had previously pled not guilty back in May. This sentencing came on the heels of the previous month's announcement that Larissa was sentenced to six years in prison for illegally selling nearly $10,000 worth of food stamps in collaboration with Nancy Caraballo, a social services worker with Catholic Charities. Cuyahoga County prosecutors believe the mother made the deals so that the caseworker would not report signs of misconduct and neglect. Body camera footage of the Rodriguez home from the day of her arrest was released by Cleveland police, showing clear and obvious signs of neglect. For the charges regarding Jordan's passing, Larissa Rodriguez was sentenced to 25 years in jail without the possibility of parole, and Christopher Rodriguez was sentenced to the maximum of 28 years. Larissa gave birth to her 10th child while awaiting trial for Jordan's slaying, but a judge granted temporary emergency custody of the newborn to Cuyahoga County Children and Family Services. I, I don't know how either one of you live with yourself. Count one, involuntary manslaughter, felony in first degree, 11 years in prison. Counts one, two, and three to be served consecutive to each other and concurrent to the sentence imposed in count five for a total sentence of 25 years. Your sentence is as follows. Count one, involuntary manslaughter, 11 years in prison, Count two, felony in the second degree, felonious assault, eight years in prison, a total sentence of 28 years. That's the maximum sentence available. The state of Ohio already removed two of Rodriguez's children permanently before Jordan's body was uncovered. Two of her other children live with their fathers. Number four, Terry J. McFadden. The judge didn't hide her emotions as a 70-year-old Grandview Heights man was sentenced to 22 years for physically harming two girls at a daycare that he and his wife operated in their home. Terry J. McFadden previously pleaded guilty to two counts of physical hurt for the attacks on the girls, sisters who were four and six when they revealed their horrendous acts to their parents in April 2019. The sentence was imposed by Franklin County Common Pleas Judge Julie M. Lynch after the victim's parents delivered lengthy statements in court. McFadden and his wife Carol were co-owners of the daycare at their home in the 700 block of Gladden Avenue, Assistant Prosecutor William Walton said. According to a civil lawsuit filed by the parents against the McFaddens, the physical attacks began after Mr. McFadden took a more active role in operating the daycare in mid-2017. The acts consisted of McFadden repeatedly touching the girls' privates, the lawsuit said. He admitted to the acts when interviewed by Grandview Heights Police. McFadden is not eligible for early release. If he lives long enough to be released from prison, he will be required to register as an offender every 90 days for the rest of his life. This court is so sick and tired of seeing adults ruin and abuse children. Convicted of or pleaded guilty to a sexually oriented child victim offense. As such, he will be a tier three registrant. They come to a daycare. Those parents struggle. These are literally 
just one step from being babies. Not let alone two of their children being raped by your own admission, sir. You violated a four-year-old and a six-year-old. You can't even know what damages you've done. Number three, Daryl Brooks. Daryl Brooks was recently sentenced in the Waukesha Christmas Parade attack. Brooks, 40, was convicted of slaying six people and injuring dozens of others on November 21, 2021, turning a joyous afternoon into a massacre. The emotional judge Jennifer Doro delivered a heartfelt speech to the victims' families before handing down consecutive life sentences without the possibility of parole. To Brooks for each of the six people slayed after he ran his SUV through the parade route. You left a path of destruction, chaos, death, injury, confusion, and panic. Frankly, Mr. Brooks, no one is safe from you. This community can only be safe if you are behind bars for the rest of your life. The community is not safe from your violent and criminal conduct unless you are in custody. She also gave 17.5 years each for 61 counts of recklessly endangering safety. Each charge comes with a maximum sentence of 12.5 years, but with the addition of an enhancer, another five years was also added to each conviction. This convictions will also run consecutively on top of the life sentences. Then, the judge gave Brooks another six consecutive sentences of 25 years each, for each count of hit and run resulting in death. Brooks was also given two six-year sentences for each felony counts of bail jumping. Those will be consecutive to the other counts, but concurrent to one another, the judge ordered. I'll rise for the jury, please. <coughs> Dated this 26th day of October 2022, signed by the foreperson. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first-degree intentional homicide as charged in count one of the information. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first-degree intentional homicide as charged in count one of the information. The court is so satisfied with the polling of the jurors. The court now accepts the verdicts. All right, Mr. Brooks, are you satisfied with the polling of the jurors? No. Finally, he was given nine months, the maximum sentence for the battery of his ex-girlfriend, Erica Patterson, which will also be consecutive to the other sentences. Brooks had been released from jail less than two weeks prior to the parade attack in a domestic hurt case on $1,000 bail that prosecutors recommended and have said since was inappropriately low. In that case, he allegedly ran over a woman who said she's the mother of his child. Court proceedings were stopped twice, once because of a phone threat and once because of Brooks's behavior. Someone threatened a public shooting at the courthouse in a phone call to the Waukesha County Communications Center at about 9.40 a.m said Waukesha County Sheriff's Office Lieutenant Nicholas Wenzel. The office increased security at the courthouse and on the county grounds. The Sheriff's Office, FBI, and the Waukesha Police Department are investigating the threat. The hearing resumed at about 11.15 a.m. In the afternoon, there were more interruptions from Brooks, similar to his behavior at trial, and more denunciations from those whose lives he destroyed. If the bailiff could confirm, well, he put him on top, he put him on the floor, that's his right. Mr. Brooks is muted because he wants to continue to debate with this court about my prior ruling. I know he's muted, but I can certainly hear him from this side. He appears to be yelling at the top of his lungs. During the court proceedings, he flipped through a book and didn't react to anyone he spoke. At one point, Brooks even rolled his eyes. State law doesn't place any restrictions on what can be said during victim impact statements other than the remarks must be relevant to the sentence. The law doesn't define relevance. As long as people don't lapse into screaming or profanity, they will be free to say what they want. Brooks chose to represent himself during his trial, despite overwhelming evidence against him. The month-long trial was punctuated by erratic outbursts from Brooks, who refused to answer to his own name, frequently interrupted Doro, and often refused to stop talking. The judge often had bailiffs move him to another courtroom where he could participate via video, but she could mute his microphone. Brooks previously pleaded not guilty by insanity, but his public defenders withdrew the insanity plea in September. The attorneys later filed a motion to withdraw from the case, and the judge ruled to allow Brooks to represent himself at trial. Prosecutors rejected the idea that Brooks is mentally incompetent and said his interruptions and defiant actions were simply attempts to disrupt the proceedings. Number 2. David Meyer 
Another rather distraught judge is unable to hold in his emotions while handing down a 10-year sentence for drunk driving. Judge Atkinson sentenced David Meyer, 47, to 10 years in prison as a result of an August 17, 2017 drunk driving incident which took the lives of two people. According to court documents, Meyer's blood alcohol level was nearly three times the legal limit when his vehicle crossed the center line and struck Rebecca Pennenberg, 44, and Ray Leah Pennenberg, 18, as they were walking in Lawrence, Wisconsin. Both lost their lives as a result of the crash. Myers has previously pleaded no contest to two counts of homicide by use of a vehicle with a prohibited alcohol concentration. I didn't know the family, had no connection, but I've seen too many of these cases and I've seen too many people suffer from drunk driving. In a brief statement to the court, he expressed remorse for his actions. Number one, Bo Dukes. One of the men connected to the Tara Grinstead case was sentenced in Wilcox County Superior Court. After a four-day trial and guilty verdict, Judge Robert Chasteen Jr. sentenced Bo Dukes to the maximum sentence of 25 years for lying to the Georgia Bureau of Investigation and concealing Grinstead's manslaughter. Dukes was convicted of four charges in Wilcox County, two counts of making false statements, one count of hindering apprehension or punishment of a criminal, and one count of concealing the passing of another. Dukes came out in an orange jail uniform in court, and Connie Grinstead, Tara's stepmom, wasted no time speaking at the hearing. Connie admitted she couldn't even spend time with her elderly mom near the end of her life because they were out looking for Tara. She mentioned how Dukes loaded truckloads of wood onto Tara's body and burned it to ash. Dixie Hudson, Dukes' mother, spoke next. Hudson said it was obvious her son has problems, but asked for some form of rehabilitation to be discussed for Dukes. The defense made its case for a sentence of 12 years, saying Dukes was a decorated soldier in the army and willingly gave a statement to the Georgia Bureau of Investigation in February 2017. Dukes even spoke for himself at the hearing, struggling to say words without choking up. He said he was more interested in self-preservation than doing what was right for Tara and praised for forgiveness from the Grinstead family. My actions and failures I'm responsible for alone, and I want each of you to know that I am truly remorseful. He also apologized to those who were wrongly accused during the investigations. He apologized to his mother and his girlfriend, Brooke Sheridan. Dukes ended by saying he was truly remorseful. Rigby spoke for the state and asked for the maximum sentence for each count, totaling to 25 years for Dukes to serve in prison. The judge acknowledged Dukes served in the U.S. Army, but said even then he was convicted of stealing $150,000 from them. He said Dukes had several times to come forward and was even asked about Tara, but he did not say anything and so his punishment was valid. Even when you're in the military, you, you may have a good military record, but you're convicted of a felony while you were in the military. Not only did you not come forward, you continued to violate the law. That's all for this video, folks. See you another time.